In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, beloved brothers and sisters, to the celebration of our Eucharist. And we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, 
also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us pray that the Lord may give us the grace that comes with His mercy and the reception of His body and blood. We acknowledge our sinfulness, ask the good Lord to have mercy on us, so that we may be worthy partakers in this celebration. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, Ever Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Excelsis Deo, et in terra pax hominibus, on e voluntatis, laudamus te, benedicimus te, Solus sanctus, tu 
Everlasting mercy, who in the very occurrence of the Paschal feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The faithful all used to meet by common consent in the portico of Solomon. No one else dared to join them, but the people were loud in their praise and the numbers of men and women who came to believe in the Lord increased steadily. So many signs and wonders were worked among the people at the hands of the apostles that the sick were even taken out into the streets and laid on beds and sleeping mats in the hope that at least the shadow of Peter might fall across some of them as he went past. People even came crowding in from the towns round about Jerusalem, bringing with them their sick and those tormented by unclean spirits. And all of them were cured. The word of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, His love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord, a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no Grant us salvation, O Lord, grant success. 
Blessed in the name of the Lord is he who comes. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord God is our light. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his love has no A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. My name is John, and through our union in Jesus, I am your brother and share your sufferings, your kingdom, and all you endure. I was on the island of Patmos for having preached God's word and witnessed for Jesus. It was the Lord's day and the spirit possessed me, and I heard a voice behind me, shouting like a trumpet, write down all that you see in a book. I turned round to see who had spoken to me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and surrounded by them, a figure like a son of man, dressed in a long robe, tied at the waist with a golden girdle. When I saw him, I fell in a dead faint at his feet. But he touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. It is I, the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, and now I am to live forever and ever and I hold the keys of death and of the underworld. Now write down all that you see of present happenings and things that are still to come. The word of the Lord. Christians to the Paschal Victim, offer your thankful praises. A lamb, the sheep redeemeth, Christ holy, sinless, reconciled sinners to the Father. Death and life have contended, in that combat stupendous, the prince of life who died reigns immortal. Speak, Mary, declaring what thou sawest wayfaring. The tomb of Christ who is living the glory of Jesus' resurrection. Bright angels attesting, the shroud and napkin resting. Yea, Christ, my hope is arisen, to Galilee straight he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, a new life obtaining. Have mercy, victor king, ever reigning. Amen. Alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Jesus said he will believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Ghost according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And for those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The doors were closed, but Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your finger here. Look, here are my hands. Give me your hand, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, My Lord and my God, Jesus said to him, You believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Dear brothers and sisters, welcome once again to the celebration of the divine mercy of God towards humanity and all creation. I invite you that on this second Sunday of Easter, we meditate together on the liturgy of the word which has been given to us with the theme, happy are those who believe yet have not seen. Dear brothers and sisters, this Sunday we contemplate on the divine mercy of God, recalling the absolute love of God through Jesus for all creation. Jesus pierced with a lance in the sight, opening for humanity the sacramental economy in the form of blood and water. In this way, the Feast of Divine Mercy is a refuge and shelter for the souls. The mercy of God transcends human mercy or compassion. It is an imaginable mercy, an imaginable compassion. As such, we cannot downplay the significance of the gospel narrative of today in which Jesus reunites with his apostles after his resurrection from the dead. On Good Friday, we relieved the events that surrounded Jesus' last hours to his death. Jesus had been betrayed by one of the disciples. He had been denied by one of his disciples again. And above all, he had been abandoned by most of his followers. It was only a few royal women, unrecognized by society, that kept around him. The disciples he had chosen himself scattered in fear. Peter, whom Jesus chose to be a rock on which he would build his church, followed him from a distance and denied him in turn three times, which means in totality. Jesus died in an excruciating pain and was buried quickly. Death could not, however, hold him in the tomb. He rose from the dead. That is our faith. That now Jesus is risen and returns to his disciples, one would naturally think if it were simply an earthly drama that Jesus would be with revenge. He would reprimand. There would be finger pointing or unending guilt. All this does not happen. No. That is what divine mercy means. Divine mercy reaches human beings through the heart of Christ crucified and risen from the dead. Divine mercy does not recriminate. Divine mercy does not punish. In the Lord's return to his disciples, we see no judgment. We see no reprimand of Thomas for his doubt and his empiricist demand to touch Jesus before he would believe his resurrection. Because of mercy, Jesus met Thomas where he was and indeed satisfied Thomas's sensory perception. Divine mercy is such. It is love and service. It is the way of God, a way removed from man's way. In the post-resurrection narratives, the reason Jesus is encountered by different disciples in different circumstances and ways. He is recognized by Mary of Magdala when Jesus calls her by name. 
by the two disciples to Emmaus. They see Jesus as a stranger until they recognize him by the sign of breaking the bread, the Eucharist. In today's Gospel, Thomas does not recognize Jesus until he has touched. It means that some of us may not recognize Jesus until we have touched the wounds of the suffering brothers and sisters. Sometimes, wounded brothers and sisters are right in front of us, but we never perceive them, or we doubt whether their wounds, emotionally, physically, or otherwise, are real. In this sense, we doubt the testimony of their lives. Therefore, in some sense, the gospel speaks to us not to doubt the proclamation of the disciples and our fellow believers, for we are all commissioned, each person in their own right, to proclaim the love and mercy of God we have seen in the resurrection of Jesus, to proclaim that Jesus is alive, that we do not worship God who remained in the tomb, but rather that he is risen indeed. Though we have not seen him with our physical eyes, though we have not touched him with our physical hands, we see and touch him with the eyes and hands of faith. Thomas, you believe because you can see me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. By trusting the consistent testimony of the apostles who saw him, touched him, and took the broken bread from his hand after the resurrection, we are indeed blessed. The gift of faith is not a gift to ourselves only. It's a gift to be shared. We, ha we need the community in which, with faith, we unite our minds and hearts to that of Christ and his gospel. In this sense, coming together as a body of Christ, the church is a requirement for being missionary because I believe and we believe together as a Christian people that is our faith. Thus, as we learn from today's gospel, Thomas's story of encounter with the risen Jesus is not a sad story, but it is an inspiring one. He doubted, but did not leave the company of the disciples. He struggled to believe, and others did not reject him. In his doubt, Jesus encouraged him, put your finger here, look here are my hands. From Thomas, we learn yet another lesson. His doubt reveals to us that the disciples were not gullible, neither was the experience of the risen Lord empty. They saw the risen Lord, and this is the message they carried along with them. Dear brothers and sisters, the mysteries of God can be confound at certain times, just as the resurrection of Jesus was to Thomas. But despite that, we find his confusion helpful to us in our own confusion. When we lack words to express our faith in Jesus, let us with confidence and humility borrow the words of Thomas, my love, my Lord and my God. When we feel there is no point going on in our lives, let our words be, my Lord and my God. When we feel lost in the maze of the world, when we are lost because of inventive and innovative skills of humanity in the world, let us ask the Lord, my Lord and my God.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is the Father and the Son, is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Unlike St. Thomas, we are those who have not seen and yet we believe, because we believe in Jesus who rose in our flesh to glory. We pray for others with the trust in the God who listens. That the Catholic Church may grow through continual proclamation of Christ's victory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the divine mercy may change the hearts and minds of people filled with hatred and conflict. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who doubt may find faith in the one who was dead and now lives forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may worship Jesus in the Eucharist with the words and faith of Thomas, my Lord and my God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That doctors providing care to the dying and the severely ill may promote treatments which respect human dignity and are an expression of hope and love. Let us pray to the Lord. That the faithful departed may rise to share the glorious life of their risen Saviour. We pray especially for those killed in the invasion of Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, all merciful, in his own body your son rose to new life. Accept the prayers we make in, this, in his name, for he is the first and the last who lives and reigns forever and ever. Unto the three, your Lord is. 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is your right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, Lord, you it more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. And we have overcome with Paschal joy. Every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts 
sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus To you, the Rafa most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her, throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope, His Grace Anthony Fisher, our Archbishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise. All they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of our, God, of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Lenus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Rollins, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosma and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their melts and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Lord, we pray, grace us accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace and the command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless and acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect, 
make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We offer your servants and your holy people, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kind countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, grace us a grant some share and a fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Messiah, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felista, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, 
not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. us, Lord, we pray from every evil, grace us a grand peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, peace I leave you, and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and the grace us a grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us acknowledge to each other sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have continuing effects in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.